Hello, I'd like to welcome you to today's telecast of True Hope for Today. Uh, today I'm going to be uh, talking on a topic uh, about uh, choosing to obey God. If you look with me uh, now to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses uh, 12 through 13, and they read, And now Israel, what does... The Lord your God require of you, but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all of his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and to keep the commandments and statutes of the Lord, which I am commanding you today for your good. Yeah, you know, what does a redeemed life look like uh, in practical day-by-day living. You know, once a person becomes a follower of uh, Jesus Christ, how does that new identity translate into daily living? God reveals his expectations for the redeemed life. Revere supremely. Uh, When you experience God's uh, redemption, Your response to that redemption is a life of reverencing God. To revere God is to esteem him and to give him the rightful place he deserves in your life. To live righteously. You know, the redeemed life results in a righteous lifestyle. Godliness replaces worldliness. Selflessness replaces selfishness. Instead of allowing the world to influence your behavior, you influence the culture with the character of Christ in you. Love completely. You know, God loves you and demonstrated his love for you by showing, by allowing Jesus to die on the cross to pay the penalty of your sin. Love God completely by giving your heart to him in full surrender. Express your love to him in private and in corporate worship. Serve passionately. Now that you've been redeemed, serve God by continuing the ministry of Jesus. Serve God by spending, by spreading the fragrance of Christ through uh, random acts of kindness. You know, find a need and meet it. You know, and obey instantly. Love what God loves and hate what God hates. James 4, 17 says, So whoever knows the right thing in it and fails to do it, for him it is sin. We need to choose to obey God. Luke 6, 12 says, In these days he went out into the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. You know, most decisions we make require major clarity. Jesus was about to make a major decision uh, that would change the course of human history. Of all the disciples showing interest in following Jesus, it was now time for Jesus to choose 12 of them and designate them as apostles. Instead of glancing out and randomly securing 12 of them, Jesus found a place of solitude on a mountainside to have unhurried time alone with God in prayer. Jesus spent the entire night praying to God. His number one priority was not building a team, but rather receiving clarity from God through prayer. Okay? Jesus oriented his life around knowing and doing God's will. Are you in the center of God's will? It's so easy to hastily uh, jump into life and uh, be cascaded with a wave of busyness. You know, we fill our lives with excessive activities and consuming commitments, having uh, never paused long enough to hear from God. 
our natural proclivity is uh, to launch into uh, into an activity. We often feel as though uh, uh, motion is a mark of progress. You know, the problem is that uh, you may be moving in the wrong direction. You may be on the wrong path. Now, how do you uh, receive clarity from God? First, recognize that God loves you and has a specific plan for your life. You were made by God and for his glory. You know, God invites you into his story. Secondly, God wants to uh, reveal his plan to you. You know, God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, through prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purpose, and his ways. Thirdly, spend unhurried time alone with God in prayer to seek his face and to learn to recognize his voice. Then simply obey what God shows you along the way. But in the process, always be ready for opposition. Acts 2 verse 17 says, And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. You know, only God sees the full and timeless picture of our lives. But he loves to encourage and motivate us with a glimpse uh, from his viewpoint. You know, vision, however it's given, depends on our obedience if it's to reach its intended fulfillment. If you don't see it before you uh, see it, you'll never see it. What vision has God given you for your life and ministry? What burden has God placed inside of you? What troubles you? What needs your attention and your leadership? Can you see it? You know, God gives you the ability to see the unseen through the eyes of faith. When you view life through the eyes of flesh, you often miss the activity of God and the reality of his abiding presence. Viewing life through the eyes of faith is to view life from God's perspective. Through the eyes of faith, you begin to see the unseen, and God enables you uh, to discern his activity. Your faith is anchored in God's word, and your confidence is placed in the character of God. Might I add, motion causes friction. When you're on a mission with God, you can anticipate the motion of obedience to generate friction from the enemy. Satan opposes God's will and hates God's children. When you choose to implement the vision God has given you, be ready. Be ready for opposition. Like Nehemiah, don't come down from a wall God has called you to in order to try to alleviate the opposition. Reserve your energy for the task God has called you to do so the vision can become a reality. Remember that people are not the enemy, but the enemy uses people. Don't allow anyone to keep you from filling the vision God has given you. Keep your eyes on the prize. You know, be encouraged, even if it hasn't been fulfilled yet. He may be preparing you uh, for a time that's coming. You know, don't give up on the vision, but keep it in your heart and stay close enough to the Lord to understand his signal. The old men that dream dreams may be praying uh, for you to be uh, strengthened as you walk into that vision. The journey can be part of that vision. 
But make sure you're walking humbly with God. Micah 6, 8 says, He has showed you, old man, what is good. And what does the Lord require you but to do justly and to love kindness and mercy and to be humble and to humble yourself and to walk humbly with your God? You know, what standard are you holding yourself to? And how do you feel when you seem to be dropping the uh, balls you're trying to juggle? And you make a mess of things. I was encouraged to take a step back and ask God uh, what his expectation of me was uh, for this uh, life. Uh, He's blessed me with his answer to me was very simple and yet so rich. And he said, act justly, love kindness and mercy and walk humbly with your God. When we do what we know is just and right, his blessings for obedience will come upon us and overtake us. As we're told in Deuteronomy 28, verse 2. And the wonderful thing is that his commands are not burdensome. They are not unrealistic and difficult to keep. Uh, They don't place uh, they don't place a yoke upon us and weigh us down. He's given us a helper, His Holy Spirit, to assist us and support us in the walk of obedience. You know, when we choose to be kind and merciful, even to those who are difficult to get along with, God's word says uh, your reward will be great, and you will. Uh, be sons of a most high because it's because uh, he he's kind to be ungrateful and wicked you know kindness is uh, one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit and as such it uh, displays God's character kindness uh, takes our eyes uh, off our own inadequacies and difficulties and focuses on the needs of another when we show mercy, uh, we, uh, we in turn can be assured of God's mercy for our own weaknesses because mercy triumphs over judgment. And when we walk before the Lord in humility, he pours out his grace, favor, and blessing upon us. And he'll lift us up and uh, make our life significant. You know, pride Call Satan to fall from the very presence of God. Pride uh, blinds us to God's greatness and grieves God's heart. But when we walk humbly with God and submit to his way, his plans, his best for us, it brings us into a place of safety under God's covering where Satan can't touch us and where blessing abounds. Child of God, don't complicate your walk. Don't complicate your walk with the Lord. Don't work so hard trying to earn your stripes with God. What he requires of you is actually so simple. To act justly, to love kindness and mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. You know, God's love never, ever fails. John 1, verses 1 through 5 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. You know, Jesus is our life. Jesus is our light. You know, he's our everything. When we fall in love with Jesus and see him for who he is, 
He is the one who created all things by his word. It opens up to us to see the fullness of the Godhead in him. You know, I'm always amazed uh, when I think of the creator, that he laid down everything to become uh, like us so that we can become like him. You know, what amazing love, what amazing forgiveness and acceptance. You know, he loves me just the way I am with no strings attached. He accepts me for me. Not who I'm going to become, but for me. He was in the beginning, and he was not created, but existed before all time. Yet he has time for me. You know, nothing's too big for him or too small. You know, what amazing love. What a God we serve. He's the one who washed the smelly feet of the disciples, and yet he could calm the wind and the waves. You know, it could open the eyes of a blind and heal the leopard. Today, uh, meditate on the person of Jesus. See him as big, yet see him coming down to spend time with you. You know, that's right, little old you and me. And he loves it when you say, Jesus, I want to spend time with you also. You know, for the man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all of his past, as we're told in Proverbs 5.21. You know, whoever you are, and whatever is happening to you right now, you are not alone. God sees you on the road you're walking today. He sees the steps you may need to take in the next few hours to get through a hard place. Today, this proverb tells us a man's ways are before the eyes of the Lord, and he ponders all of his paths. You know, this means God not only watches the winding of your road every day, but he's also thinking about every step and everything you must step over. Wow, to me, to me, that's just amazing. It's just, uh, how can I put it? It blows my mind. Yeah, God is considering your next fork in the road, too. The good choices that lie ahead and the dismal, misery-inducing ones. When he ponders, your Father in Heaven is reflecting on what you're going to decide. You know, even though he's known every detail of your life from eternity past, he is still meditating upon it as it plays out. You know, once again, that ought to blow, blows my mind and ought to blow your mind too. You know, God knows the way that you take. He wants you to succeed in... Uh, in the testing you're experiencing, you know, considering uh, his great love for you, do you honestly think he will let you go through more than you can handle? No. No. He won't let a hard season knock you off the path of your highest usefulness to his kingdom. And he wants to help you make uh, sure you don't drive yourself off the high road. He can do this because he, he sees it all. You know, God is near to you when your heart is broken and saves you when your spirit is crushed. You know, God draws close to you during hardship unlike any other time in your life. You know, maybe that is why the desperate times of need come. You know, they might not be uh, 
the very moments God is uh, seeking uh, to engineer, times of turning to him as never before, are you drawing near to him? You know, if this is your moment of desperation and you don't know how to pray, God even knows uh, that. Romans 8 tells us that God's Spirit prays for us when we don't have words. You know, just start praying and sharing your heart. Thank God for knowing the way you take and thinking about every step in your life long before you take it. He is pondering about you. So let's turn our eyes upon Jesus in every situation, every circumstance. Keep our eyes focused on Jesus. Isaiah 33, verses 17 and verse 21 says, Your eyes will see the king and his beauty in the highlands of heaven far away. The glorious Lord will be to us a wide river of protection, and no enemy can cross. Are you ever in a stressful situation with a day piled high with problems? Does there ever seem to be enough time? Are you laden with other people's burdens? Are you laboring intensely in God's work without Him? Are you tired and worn out? Do you ever think that, you, uh, that you're more of a human doing than a human being? Then stop for a moment and look up and know that the Lord is able to safely keep that which we've committed to him. As the words of a hymn say, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. You know, could the Lord be saying uh, these words to you today? Saying, you're part of my creation, made to worship me. I'm calling you now, just for this moment, to lift up your eyes and look beyond all that's going on around you. Look into my heavenly world where all is peace, harmony, and order. Where there's constant joy, peace, and thanksgiving around my throne. You know, this is a place where my will is being fulfilled and my plans are working together for good for those who love me. This is a place of beauty and splendor that transcends this world. You know, come for a while and look into these things. And as you gaze into my eternal kingdom, receive a truth of my glorious love into your heart. It will enable you to return to what you were doing with my added peace and security and enable you to bless those who are searching for me this day. Could you hear the Lord speaking to you now? Abide in his presence. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Every stressful moment that comes into your life when your day is piled high with, and with messy problems. When you're laden with other person's burdens. Labor intensely.
But remember, stop for a moment and look up and know that the Lord is able to safely keep that which he's committed, which you've committed to him. As the words of a hymn say once again, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full into his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. That's going to be the end of today's telecast. So the next time, may God bless you and keep you. Thank you. I'm Dr. Timothy, Senior Ministry Leader, inviting you to learn more about us. Our message is that the Lord Jesus Christ is mankind's only true hope. Now, what makes True Hope Ministry somewhat unique is our mission, which is to help you do what God has called you to do. Each member of True Hope shares in this commitment of helping one another uh, in their respective endeavors of what God has called them to do. Now, beyond what's typically offered by ministry fellowships, the greatest resource of True Hope Ministries is what we call ministry companionship. Now, ministry companionship is simply the members of True Hope Ministries investing in the success of each other within our fellowship. Plus, we encourage our ministers to also meet opportunities to invest into the success of other ministers in their local church communities. Ministry companionship is based on two primary principles. First, that by the Lord's giftings and our own ministry experiences, each of us holds pieces for the success of others in ministry. And second, those ordained in ministry service, especially leadership in ministry, should not mean becoming spiritually and emotionally isolated. Yet so many in ministry suffer from this very malady. You know, as adverse conditions, even aggressive actions against the church increasingly develop in America, ministry servants and leaders of ministry cannot afford to be without genuine ministry companions. If you or someone you know in ministry sees the need for ministry companionship, please visit our website. And you know, we'd be so glad to talk with you, so give us a call. The call is toll-free, and if I can't answer your call at the moment, please leave a message because I promise I'll return your call just as soon as I can because I really do look forward to helping you do what God has called you to do.